Hey everybody, thanks for watching. This is Andrew from Schnauzer Face Minis, and I am really excited about today's tutorial. I'll be honest, most of my tutorials are crap, but today I am bringing my B game. First, I'm going to demonstrate painting an Ultramarine's Dreadnought to a nice tabletop standard, as you can see here. And in the second part, I'm going to go over a handful of weathering techniques that'll make the model stand out a little bit more. So let's get started. I start with Vallejo Polyurethane Black Primer. I've got the weapons connected to brass rod so they don't get in the way. I base coat the whole model with Vallejo Model Air Dark Sea Blue and Hall Red at a 5 to 1 ratio. Hall Red darkens the blue a little, but it's not strong enough to turn it purple. To accentuate the dreadnought sharp lines, I want to build gradients in each individual section, as opposed to one big gradient on the whole model. For this to really pop, my number one goal is contrast. For that, I need the lightest part of each gradient to touch the darkest part of each adjacent gradient, as these pictures demonstrate. The first highlight is dark sea blue and light sea blue at a 3 to 1 mix. I should mention that this video is purposely presented out of order. I've arranged it based on color progression rather than the order of how I actually painted the model in real life. When painting it, I did the full gradient from dark to light on each individual section. That was kind of confusing in video form, so I just clumped sections together based on color. Be sure to be precise and take your time when masking off areas with painter's tape. Without a really sharp and clean line, the whole effect is wasted. The next highlight is light sea blue and white at a 1 to 1 mix. The final highlight is pure VMA white. Usually I'd follow this step with the glaze of my base color, but this time I'm aiming for really high contrast, so the whites need to stay white. I'll base coat the gold and copper parts with Reaper Master Series Earth Brown.
I use Vallejo Old Gold Metallic Paint. This is an alcohol-based paint, so it needs to be thinned with alcohol. Most people use isopropyl alcohol as their thinner, but me? I use a 40. Wait, what do you mean I'm just reusing jokes now? I've never said that before. Most people use isopropyl alcohol, but me? I use a 40. Look, I don't know what you're talking about here, but I am not the type to recycle content. Hey, what do you call a castigator who brings you food and refills your drinks? A cast a waiter. <laughs> Classic. The whole model gets a coat of Liquitex gloss varnish in preparation for the oil wash. I make a wash with Winsor & Newton Ivory Black and Van Dyke Brown at about 50-50. If you're new to oil washes, I've included a link in the description to a previous tutorial on that topic. Now I use clean mineral spirits to absorb some of the excess wash. After the model is dry, I seal it with Tester's Dull Coat. That'll dull the metallics a little, so now is a good time to touch them up. For the headlight, I use a progression from hall red to Italian red to orange. I use the same color progression for the little light bulbs. For the skulls, I'm going from US flat brown to bone white with a final highlight of elfic flesh.
I use Italian red thinned 8 to 1 with water to simulate light fall off from the light bulb and headlight. On the missile launcher, I go from VMA black metallic to gunmetal to chrome. That pretty much covers the basics. If you like the clean look, feel free to stop here, but I'm going to quickly weather the model to give it a little bit more character. Now I'm back to the oil paints. I'm starting off with Van Dyke Brown, as well as Crimson Red, Brilliant Red, and Cobalt Violet Hue. I've also got several wells filled with clean mineral spirits in order to make washes. As you can see, you don't need a whole lot of paint on your palette. I begin with very dilute washes at about 5 to 1 thinner to paint. I made a few washes with different mixes of reds and brown to simulate rust. Before long, I start applying thicker applications of paint, and I use a second brush with clean mineral spirits to push that paint around until it looks like rust, water, and mud streaks. The great thing about the oils is the extended open time when compared to acrylics. You can put down streaks of paint and come back the next day and it'll still be workable. You can see I'm basically just throwing paint on the model at this point. Blending and feathering it around is the real trick. Each time I clean my brush and the mineral spirits, I'm essentially making an oil wash. After several cleanings, I've built up some cool colors. So now I'm not feathering out the streaks of paint with clean mineral spirits, I'm actually blending them out using extremely thin, rust-colored washes. After letting the model dry, I move on to the Vallejo weathering pigments. First I apply them dry with a flat brush. I'm using dark red ochre and burnt sienna, but any number of red or orange tones can simulate realistic rust. I add some color variation to the rust with Leviathan Purple. 
I don't know why, but I seem to use purple for everything. To get a really easy chip paint effect, I dry brush some chainmail silver in areas that are likely to be damaged. This isn't the best way to get a weathering effect, but it's quick and easy. It might help to sell the effect if you cover the area with another application of rust pigment. Now I apply pigments that I've mixed with a little rubbing alcohol. I add just enough alcohol to cause the pigment to clump up and become kind of sticky. This will give you a really cool textured effect that you can't get when you apply the weathering pigments dry. Anyway, that's all I got for this one. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. See you next time.